Hi everyone, my name is Yi Shen and I'm an RPA engineer at AI Singapore, working on Tag UI. Tag UI is a command line RPA tool that's easy to use. Tag UI automates processes for you, and each automated workflow is called a flow. These flows are just text files with instructions, so they're easy to write, open, understand, and to use. Now, let's look at a few flows to watch Tag UI in action. You can see here that I have three flows on my desktop. These I have saved and deployed as double clickable flows. It's really, really easy to do this and we'll look at how to do it later. For now, let's watch what the flows do. The first one, update temperature, is related to our current COVID-19 situation. Our organization, NUS, requires us to lock our temperature twice daily in two separate portals. One of these is behind a login wall. So it can be a bit cumbersome to do this multiple times a day and visit two separate links. So we wrote a simple flow to update both sides uh, while inputting your temperature just once. Let's look at how it works. So double clicking the flow runs Tag UI, which opens Chrome automatically. Of course, Chrome needs to be installed. Here it asks us for our temperature in Celsius. I'll just uh, state 36.4 and press enter. And it comes to our login page in NUS. Here, I've already filled in my details and it will key in the details um, based on what I filled in. When the flow goes to the login page, it will check whether I'm already logged in. If I'm already logged in, it will skip the login steps. Of course, it's clever enough to do that. Now it go opens another session of Chrome so that I can go to Google Sheets. And from here, I'll go and search for my correct um, row and update the correct column. And that's it. We've updated both sides with a simple flow in Tag UI. Let's look at the next flow. Forexgmail.com. When I double click this, basically I'm going to go to uh, a page on DBS website to get a lot to get a list of exchange rates for that day. Uh, this is a very common situation in a lot of manufacturing companies where they record down um, the exchange rates for the day to use in their daily costing. So I will go to that page, copy down all of the uh, exchange rates, save it into a CSV and email it to an email address. Let's look at it in action. Again, it opens Chrome. Note that not all flows need to use Chrome, and you can specify it not to open Chrome as well. So we have gone to this web page, and then we can see in the background that the tag UI is reading each row and writing it into a CSV. It counts the number of rows in the table, loops through each row, and um, writes it as a row in a CSV. Now it opens Chrome. Again, uh, visiting Gmail, and it's going to um, send an email based on the steps that we have programmed. And that's done. Now, we can look at the, the result of the flow. There's numbers.csv, and here are all exchange rates, all saved uh, automatically. Of course, these flows can be scheduled to run daily at a certain time. It's really easy and we'll look at how to do this later. The last flow here is letter flow. Uh, what it's going to do is open a Microsoft Word document. And this Microsoft Word document is basically a template with a few, uh, you could say, fields that need to be filled in based on uh, certain uh, information. 
So it will update those fields based on the information um, and print out uh, the Word document. Uh, let's look at it in action. This is going to be quite interesting because it doesn't uh, it doesn't use Chrome for once, and it also uses OCR on the page. So here it's going to look for address of donor uh, using OCR. Then it's going to use uh, it's going to move the mouse to address of donor, uh, double click it and replace it with the correct text. Again, it uses OCR to find um, the donor name, the text donor name. So I'm just literally typing, click, uh, double click donor name using OCR. And then it's doing it for me. And of course, I'm just printing it to one note here. Now that's the, that's what we have for tech UI samples. So we've just witnessed how powerful tech UI can be. And these are just a few simple flows to demonstrate the capabilities of tech UI. Now let's look at the actual flow text files behind these flows and see how simple it is. The first one, update temp.tag. We can open this with any kind of um, text editor. I'm just going to be using VS Code, Visual Studio Code, because it's what I normally use anyway. This here is the entire flow. It's pretty compact, and you can see that uh, a lot of the syntax is really simple. First thing, we can look at uh, each row. In this flow, and in general in Tag UI, flows are divided into steps. Each line is generally a step. The name of the step is the first word. Here the word is ask. So it's the ask step. And after that we have a space, and this is what we want to ask. This here, well, we're just going to prompt um, the user for text input. That's where I entered 36.4. And then now, when it, after it prompts for text input, that input will be saved as ask underscore result. This second line is just to say um, we're going to create a new variable which is called user temp and we're going to call it, we're going to assign the value of ask result just to make it, just to give it a better name, user temperature. Now we're just going to visit the, um, the URL of the NUS portal so that we can do our daily declaration. Here, the step here involves just pasting the entire URL. Tag UI is smart enough to detect that this is a URL and I should visit it. Now here's how we write our if statement. If exists username, uh, here is where we're checking that there is uh, an element that looks like username in the uh, current web page. If there is, that means, hey, we are at the login page. We need to log in. If we don't see this page, it means we're already logged in from a previous session. Here we can see type username uh, as what? So type username is the name of the element in um, the web page. And this is what you want to type it as. And this username here is saved locally on my computer. It's a variable that's saved locally. And this is useful because this, is, this allows us to share this flow very easily with others without having to share our username and password, of course. Right. Uh, these variables are stored in a file called techuilocal.csv. You can see it here, techuilocal.csv. You can update it with your local variables. Here again, we type the temperature. This is the name of the field uh, element, input element uh, on the web page. And you can see how simple it is, really. Uh, here, the if clause, all this, uh, these two steps, they are 
within the block of the if clause. So they will only happen if we are uh, blocked by the login page. We have the keyboard step. The keyboard step lets us interact directly with the keyboard. Here we are holding Windows key and pressing R. This lets us easily run any other applications. For example, here we do Windows R, type Chrome, press Enter. It's an easy way to open applications in Windows. Although Tag UI also works on Mac and Linux, it's cross platform. Here we can see um, that a lot of this automation is simply keyboard interactions using shortcuts. We fill in the URL address with Control L, allowing us to enter the URL in the web page. And then we, after we get to the web page, we control F to look for our name and then um, press write a number of times so that we can enter our uh, temperature in the correct uh, column. And that's it. Let's look at the next flow. It's going to be um, Forex Gmail. Okay, here this one is a little bit longer, but no more complicated. Again, here from the start, we are going to visit the URL of the um, DBS uh, exchange rates page. This dump step allows us to create a new file, and it's going to write this into the file. It's going to write currency, comma, rate into a file called numbers.csv. This just creates the column headers for a CSV file. As you know, a CSV file is a comma-separated values file. So the, com the comma here denotes that currency is the first column, rate is the second column. Next, we are going to um, count the number of rows in this page. In this page, and this is the number of rows in the uh, foreign exchange rate table. Um, and I, inside this count function, we have an X path. Some of you will probably be familiar with this already. This is a very common and expressive and powerful way to identify web elements on a web page. So here we have an X path expression, which uh, is the number of rows. You can see TR, if any of you are familiar with HTML. TR is the table rows, and we are counting the table rows. And we'll assign that to the, to the variable rows. So now we're going to loop through the rows, uh, and we're going to loop through uh, this number of times uh, based on the row count. Uh, and then each time we're going to call it the variable row. Now we have the read step. This basically looks at the web page. Uh, reads an element's text or attribute to a variable. So here we're going to look for this x path and we're going to um, get the value and store it into the variable called currency. The second uh, value we're going to store it into the variable called rate. And now um, we're simply going to assign uh, and this, this, these uh, values and put them into an array, into a list, um, and call it forex rate. Next, we're going to simply write this whole forex rate as a CSV row into the numbers.csv that we created earlier. Okay, numbers.csv is the one we created earlier. Write just appends this um, text as a new row in um, the previous file. Then we just go into uh, create uh, to open up another instance of Chrome. Why we're opening another instance of Chrome here is because uh, Google blocks uh, some automations, um, some services when you are using automated uh, uh, an automated browser. So for example, Gmail, sometimes you won't be able to access it with an automated browser. 
this was a recent uh, change by Gmail and we have had to adapt to it. So now we open uh, Gmail in a separate browser. Then um, we click on compose.png. What was compose.png? I can go back here. Compose.png is a file. It's an image of screenshot. Well, what I want TechUI to click on, it will use uh, image recognition on the current screen. So this is visual automation. It's going to look for anything that looks a very high percentage similar to this, and it's going to go to the middle of it and click it to compose a new email. We click it, we wait for a second, we type an email, we type the uh, email subject, we click attach, and then uh, we attach our file. We attach our file and we can send it using keyboard shortcuts. Pretty simple. Let's go to the last uh, flow. That's going to be letter flow. Here we're going to use OCR as mentioned earlier. Um, we open uh, the template document again, and this is uh, the path to the template document. We're going to put it onto the clipboard, then we paste it uh, in our run command and press enter, as we see here. Next, we have the wait command. Uh, we wait for a few seconds, then uh, here we have a double click. We will double click the address of donor using OCR. So uh, how this works is Tag UI will look at the current screen. It will scan the entire screen for text. Turn this entire screen image into text. It will detect uh, text that matches address of donor and it goes to the location and double clicks it Then after that we will just replace it with one two three automation lane. It does the same for donor name and donor amount And here we can do the rest with keyboard uh, shortcuts Really 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 simple, but you can see how powerful the OCR um, uh, feature of uh, clicking and uh, finding locations uh, on your screen just based on uh, text can be how powerful it can be. Next, we'll look at how to install Tag UI for yourself so you can get started with Tag UI. Here's the documentation for um, Tag UI. It's on readthedocs.io, um, and you just simply go to installation on the left hand side. And it gives you installation instructions for Windows or Mac or Linux. Since I'm on Windows, you can just click here. It gives you the direct link to the uh, zip file. Next, um, we want to unzip this file to C drive, directly onto C drive. Uh, we have to also have install our dependencies. There are two dependencies here for Windows. The first one is um, Open JDK, and if you click here, it is packaged for you. It is, we're using a flavor of Open JDK called Amazon Coretto. It's completely free. Um, the next thing we have to install is Chrome. Most probably you already have this installed, so that should be fine. So then, once we're done with that, we just need to open our command prompt. Uh, and if, uh, since this is made simple for everyone, uh, we also have instructions on how to do this, but most likely you know, you know how to do this already. So we can open our command prompt, and then um, we can uh, add tag UI source to our path with this. And then we can uh, run our first flow. So this is our first flow, and we can run it. If it starts properly without an error, that means you have installed Tag UI properly. So here, the first sample flow goes to latest movies. It um, waits a bit and uh, snaps the uh, 
a screenshot of the image of the results. Yeah, it's just a really, really simple flow. If you have any problems with that, you can go to um, having problems and then uh, check whether these problems are applicable to yourself. If not, you can also come to our GitHub um, page and then uh, post an issue on our GitHub um, issues page. And that's it for the installation. Really, really simple. Uh, again here, the Amazon Coretto is a installer that you can just click through and uh, UI windows it's just a zip file uh, and we can extract this directly onto C drive directly onto C drive so it would be just like that okay. now that we have set up tech UI we have seen how easy it is to, to do that and now we're going to write our first flow. We go to File Explorer and we navigate to the C Drive Tag UI Flows folder. This is where we recommend um, you write all of your flows. You can uh, separate them into different folders. So let me have uh, my first flow. And then I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to have a text document. I'm going to call it firstflow.tag. I'll change the extension to .tag because uh, although all our flow files are text files, we uh, require a .tag extension at the end. Okay, now I'm just going to open this with uh, Visual Studio Code, VS Code, although you can use whatever text editor you like, even Notepad. Okay, now we have opened our flow. Uh, we need to think about what we want to do with this. So uh, how about for a simple start, we can go to a web page and click around the web page, um, just like that. We'll look at how we can do that. So um, we, in fact, why not we just come to the documentation page and this is our documentation uh, um, URL, I'll I copy it and I'm going to paste it here. So that means Tag UI will come to this page and then and from here we want Tag UI to click on main concepts just like that as a simple first flow. So how do we get Tag UI to click on main concepts? Um, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, Tag UI can read um, elements, uh, web elements on a web page using the DOM, uh, using XPath, but it also has more intuitive and simple systems to try to identify web elements. So here, if we just do click main concepts, it should work. And I'll talk about why later. Concepts. Uh, and then we'll do wait 5 so that we can um, see, see to make sure that it works. And now let's run this flow. When we do click main concepts, um, Tech UI will look for um, the entire, look through the entire DOM and look for any elements where it has a name that looks like main concepts or a class that looks like main concepts or uh, ID that looks like main concepts or even a text that looks like main concepts. And it will try to click on that. So here, let's run it. So how do we run this um, flow? Let's go to our command prompt, go CMD. Uh, I believe we have, uh, we have it in C drive, uh, tech UI, slash flows, slash my first flow. And I'll just do tech UI, first flow dot tag and now it opens chrome as we expected it goes to the web page and it will click on main concepts so tech ui was able to look for uh, main concepts identify it and click it 
Of course, this flow is not very useful, but it's just the simplest first flow that we can do that demonstrates just clicking and uh, using the web browser. Um, the question is not how do we deploy this flow as the shortcut so that we can simply double click it to run. Uh, to do that, we just do tag UI first flow dot tag with a dash D. This is the deploy option. We can also do dash deploy. And we do that. We generated a first flow dot CMD. Um, and we can move this first flow dot CMD to our desktop. And now we can double click this to run our flow. Simple as that. And you can see that it works. All right. And it's going to finish in a few seconds. Yep. Now, this is probably a good time for us to look through the documentation of Tech UI. Tech UI's uh, version 6 just released, and with it, we have a brand new uh, documentation on read the docs. Uh, in, on top of the installation instructions, we also go through the main concepts of Tech UI, advanced concepts, and a reference of all the steps, uh, run options, and other helper functions that we can use. Okay, so let's look at what some of these uh, look like. So we go through all the flows. Uh, we also have um, the GIFs um, showing uh, the demonstrations of each uh, feature. Uh, and then here we have uh, showing you how to use the deploy file, uh, the deploy uh, option. Uh, and as you can see here, if you move your flow to another folder, then you need to create a new shortcut file to uh, we just do the uh, deploy option again. You can also run um, flows from online, from a URL online. Um, like just here, you can run the flow uh, from uh, the sample flow from online. You can run the, the tag UI without the browser uh, with headless mode, as in using a browser, but uh, in invisible browser. Can do that in headless mode. Uh, here we have the steps and it goes through how um, to use all the steps and the most common steps like click, uh, visit, type. Uh, we only went through some of the uh, uh, features uh, and steps uh, early on. So here we can see more on the uh, documentation. Here we can see the examples, click getting started, so again, we are looking for getting started as the ID, name, class, title, or even getting started in the text. We also uh, we can also provide the, the full X path, which is an expressive way, and a very um, uh, certain way to click on certain elements. We can also click on uh, coordinates of the screen. Although this is a fragile method of uh, clicking on uh, elements because sometimes elements can move around based on uh, text boxes, uh, uh, text, bo text being longer or shorter, or websites just changing their uh, interface. But this is also a possibility to click on uh, points based on coordinates. We can also click based on uh, images like what we saw in the demonstration earlier. Here we have visit the web page, type. Uh, this is very common. We want to type something into, uh, in, into web input. So this is the name of the input, and we will type some text into it. Uh, continue on, we can see the different types of identifiers. So these are XPath, this is DOM. Uh, click on points. Uh, here we also have region identifiers. An identifier is just a way for us to identify uh, what we want the step to work on. So here uh, we can do read, and uh, this is a region, 300, 400 to 500, 550. That means uh, we're going to look at the region between points 300, 400 as XY coordinates on the screen to another point which is uh, with 500, 550. And within 
the rectangle bounded by these points, we're going to OCR all the text there and save that text to a variable. So this can be very useful to uh, look to read uh, documents uh, which are scanned in. Uh, so we had some uh, companies also, they scanned in some documents and they want to uh, match uh, invoices or other reports, uh, make sure they match up. So they also use uh, this uh, uh, OCR reading. Okay. Uh, we also have live mode, which is an excellent way to test out and develop your own flows. Uh, basically, it is an interpreter for tech UI. So uh, you can just type in um, steps and then it will execute each step line by line. Yeah. And it will, yeah, it will execute all the steps uh, line by line. So you can test what works and what doesn't work. If statements, blah, blah, blah. You have helper functions. These are basically JavaScript functions that we can use in our tech UI flows. Uh, tech UI is still under active development, so we're constantly trying to improve the API and make it easier and easier for um, users to use uh, tech UI to write their flows. Some other things in uh, that's possible with tech UI include using data tables. So here, it, uh, Data tables, they are basically CSV files. It allows us to run the flow multiple times. We can have a CSV file with a thousand rows and it will run, it will run our flow 1,000 times. Um, one time for each row in the CSV file that we specify. So we just run it with tag UI with myflow.tag and then the name of the data table. This is the data table name, data.csv. And then it will run it with these uh, variable values. Uh, the variable uh, username uh, will be uh, test account, password will be blah blah blah, and so on and so forth. You can also run other flows within flows uh, and a lot more. So if you when you want to learn more about tech UI and you want to figure out what you can do and how to do a certain thing in tech UI, you want to go to the reference. This is where you can list out all, we can see all the steps to interact with the mouse and keyboard. These are the things you can do. To interact with the web, these are the things you can do, uh, so on and so forth. You want to save files, these are the different steps that we can do. Uh, one interesting thing about Tech UI also is that you can, uh, it's very powerful in that you can integrate uh, Python, JavaScript, and um, uh, this visual automation library called Sikuli in uh, the tech UI flow itself. So how do we do that? Let's look at some examples. So here, um, if you want to run some Python code, we can just do py space and some Python statement. So here we py and then this is just Python code, result equals 2 plus 3. And then uh, we we can transfer this uh, result um, back to our tag UI namespace, our tag UI um, uh, command uh, runtime, by uh, printing it to uh, the standard STD out, standard out. And then it, when we print it to standard out in uh, Python, it will be saved as py result back in the tag UI runtime. So that's basically it. So why not we try to look at a more involved flow, a more, comp a more complex flow, and write it with tag UI, now that we have the documentation uh, uh, with us. So now let's use the documentation to create a second, more complex flow. Um, here we have uh, fave.com. It's a website that has deals for group purchases. Some of the deals can be quite attractive. So let's say I'm really interested in some of these deals, but only a certain subset of them. Like I only care about the ones which are one for one because I want to go there with my girlfriend or whatever. So let's get a flow that comes to this website, um, looks for uh, deals which are one for one, and then uh, saves them for me into a list. Right, and it will run it every day. 
Okay, so uh, how we can do that is uh, let's create first a new flow. Um, we'll create our folder second flow and we'll create a new flow which I will call second.ph. Okay, and again, I'm going to open this in any uh, text editor. I'm just using VS Code here. And here, the first thing we'll do is the URL to visit. Here, I copy this URL and I will paste it here. Next, uh, what I want to do is to write a list of uh, the deals. So, the easiest way to do this is to create a CSV file. And if you saw from the earlier flow, uh, we write a CSV file here, right, in our Forex Exchange uh, demonstration. So you can just copy it and uh, use the same uh, framework, the same idea. So we want to dump uh, deal and the link, that sounds about right, to uh, deals.csv. Uh, we're going to count the elements uh, which have the deals. So it would be each of these cards, like one card here, one card here, one card here. We're going to count all these. So I'm going to right click and inspect. So it looks like these elements are in the div class column um, and the UI card segment. Okay, so I'm going to use XPath to uh, loop through to identify these five elements and count them. So I'm going to double click to copy the class. Uh, these should be div elements. So here we're looking for all div elements which have the class equals to this. And that should be good. And we're going to call these cuts for each cut, for cut from one to cuts. Uh, we're going to read. So now we're going to loop. This allows us to loop through um, all of these cuts. And for each cut, we're going to say we want to read. Uh, this cut uh, and the so here cut will look become from go from one two three four five six seven up to however many cuts there are so out of all of these cut uh, elements I want to get the first one then the second one the third one the fourth one the fifth one these back ticks will replace this card with either one, two, three, four, or five, or whatever uh, number the loop is in. Uh, okay, read from read this, and we read the card. But we don't just want to read the card. We want to read the card, and we want to go into the. We want to get this, right? Which is the name of this uh, this uh, this offer. So, which is under A class content. So, we're going to go A class equals to content slash uh, H3. Yeah, that looks good. And this will be the deal. But I don't just want to grab the deal. I want to grab the deal only if... Um, the deal contains a one for one. So I'll do an if statement. If deal contains a one for one. Did I spell that right? Yeah. So one for one always looks like this. So I'll do a one dash four dash one. So if it contains one for one, then I will um, say I want to get the link as well. So I'm going to read something to link. href. Yeah, I'm going to get this link, which allows me to go to the actual deal. 
uh, after I've listed down all the interesting deals. So this is the actual uh, uh, link, but it's not a complete link, it's a partial link, which is slash uh, Singapore. So we need to add on this myfaith.com at the front. So I'll do a copy, a copy from here, and I'll make a note that I need to add on this myfaith.com. Okay. Uh, so for here, now we're going to do, we're going to copy this, this part here. Let's say, view row equals to view. And then we're going to add on myfave.com in front of the link. And now we have our deal row. And uh, we can write this deal row to our deals.csv. I think that looks good. So again, what, what's happening here is we go to this web page, we create this deals.csv with the column headings, deal and link. Then we count the number of cards uh, using XPath. You can learn more about XPath on W3 schools. Uh, uh, XPath, uh, W3 schools, XPath. Yeah, this is a really good link to learn XPath. Uh, and then from here, uh, we're going to check, we're going to assign this value to the deal. And if the deal contains one for one, we will uh, write the row using the deal and the link. We're going to write the row using the deal and the link. All right, so let's do this. Now let's run our uh, new uh, flow. We're going to do tag UI second dot tag. And let's check whether this works. can't find forex rate, uh, clearly because we shouldn't have a forex rate, it was from earlier on. So this is now a deal row. So we will try again. I'll block these, and we can look at the, we can look here, yep. It seems to be looping through um, the elements. And okay, it looks like it's finished in 16 seconds. Uh, okay, it's created our CSV file. And we can check here. Oh, great. So we have our deals. Uh, these are the deal names. They all contain this one for one, which is excellent. And we have our link here. So we can follow these uh, and look for the deals of our dreams. All right. One for one choose my gato. I think I'll have this with my girlfriend uh, tonight. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so that's it. We again we can deploy these uh, this flow easily uh, just using the D uh, option, which is the deploy option. Now we have this deploy option. Uh, we can bring it to our desktop. And we can also run this using a Windows scheduler. Scheduler, a task scheduler. With task scheduler, we can um, tell task scheduler to run this uh, task uh, every day at a certain time. Uh, it's pretty simple. I'll just go through the basics. We create a basic task. Uh, check for deals. Daily, yes. Occur every one day, yes. Start a program, yes. And then I'll just say, please open second. Start. And then that's it. Now it's going to start at 4.22 p.m. every day before I go home uh, for the day. And check for any nice one-for-one -one deals that I can um, enjoy. 
on that day. And that's it. We have learned how to uh, use Tag UI to write flows, to deploy flows. We have seen how easy it is to read the flows and to learn from the documentation. If you're interested in helping out Tag UI, we're always welcoming contributors. Head over to our GitHub page and you can suggest issues and make pull requests. We're currently undergoing a large migration to remove the open JDK and PHP dependencies and everything and run everything on Node.js. Thanks for coming and enjoy your day ahead.